There was another, there's some interesting research that you also published Mm -hmm. kind of um, in the, in the brain area is sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I'd love for you to talk about that study. I thought it was so interesting. These resistance training females and you gave them creatine and it really seemed to help improve their sleep on training day. Yeah, it was uh, colleagues at uh, University of Idaho and uh, Brown and CJ Prush. And they looked at young, healthy uh, individuals, uh, biological females. And we gave a pretty high dose here, five grams, plus we add a five grams of placebo. So 10 grams a day versus a 10 gram uh, placebo. And this was done for six weeks. And they resistance train um, with a tonal home gym for um, uh, two days a week. And the interesting thing is total sleep duration on the days they trained was substantially higher. I think it was about almost an hour compared to placebo. And again, these are young um, university age students um, that were taking creatine, about five grams a day. The nice thing is it also improved strength. There was no big fluctuations in weight gain, which was very, very uh, interesting. No adverse effects. Um, Now, there was no mechanisms assessed, but the logic was that on the days these individuals are training, um, maybe they put in more effort. So creatine helped recover the body a little bit more, allowed that body to be in repair mechanism a little bit more. And they slept more for about an hour uh, on average more. We still don't know the exact reason, but it is interesting that it improves sleep duration. Yeah, And it's almost kind of the opposite mm-hmm. of what we were just talking about. No. We were talking about if you're in this context where you're jet lagged, you're sleep deprived, And you take the creatine and it kind of helps you get over that brain fog that like, you know, you just you're not quite, you know, on your game. Yeah, it goes against most of the the comments I get where when people take high dose creatine, some people say they feel like insomnia or uh, intermittent sleep. And the theory there from a rodent model out of Belgium is that maybe the brain is recovering quicker, that it doesn't need to sleep as long. So we still need a lot of work to do. We need to look at different stages of sleep. We'd, I'd really like to look at some blood biomarkers, uh, indication of what's happening from an inflammation perspective. Uh, so there's a lot of work in that area to go. Yeah. You know, the other thing I was thinking about, Darren, was, mm-hmm. I mean, when, so adenosine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there is there a role? Because, I mean, it's mm-hmm. downstream of ATP. Yeah. Right. So I'm wondering if there's any role because adenosine is something that does make you sleepy. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of caffeine, the adenosine. Right. 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 Yeah. No, it's possibly there. Um, There's been a lot of speculation. They thought also glycine is implicated and where glycine is involved in the in the synthesis of creatine. So there's a lot there. Um, I think we'll talk maybe about homocysteine a little bit later in the methyl. So, God, there's a lot of areas to look at. And uh, I think we thought we knew everything about creatine. And now it's taken on a new life of its own. And again, I'll have a job for maybe 20 or 30 more years looking at this. So, yeah. Well, let's talk. Yeah. Let's go back to the brain okay. and talk about another. So we talked about brain aging, mm-hmm. you know, traumatic brain injury, which is stress. We talked yeah. about lack of sleep, you know, anything that's stressing the brain. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess, you know, neurodegenerative disease is a very yeah. stressful thing on the brain as yeah. well. It would be interesting to see mm-hmm. uh if creatine can help in that regard. Mm-hmm. Although, again, prevention is always, yeah. it's always better, right? If you can Yeah, we've can looked help. at the totality of limited evidence, and we're not seeing a lot of effects yet. Um, there's benefits on young boys with muscular dystrophy, but that's a little bit different. But when we look at ALS, Parkinson's, Huntington's, uh, multiple sclerosis, um, all those dementia and Alzheimer's, we're not seeing a lot of promise. There's been a few small scale studies that show benefits. But when you look at a properly sample sized uh, study, there was a big one five years in, in Germany, didn't see any greater effects. Um, so again, maybe the dose was too, when I look at the dose they use, it was very small compared to now our, our body of evidence suggesting higher dose, big sample size. And then of course, what about the the effects of the disease? Can creatine really rescue the effects to give a significant effect? We don't know. Preventing would be the number one thing. But uh, we're starting to do a study in northern Iowa to look at the effects of creatine now in individuals with cognitive decline. Um, And I believe there's a study out of Kansas that is actually looking at people with diagnosed Alzheimer's. So super excited to see these results. If it can have any effect, even help one person, um, even regardless of a statistical effect, if it can have individual results, I think it's something we need to consider. Yeah. Okay, well, what I was going to get to was the other um, Mm -hmm. part of, you know, brain disorders, you have neuropsychiatric disorders, you have depression, anxiety. Um, Those are those are also unfortunately very common Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, even in in younger adults and adolescents. So there's been some interesting research with creatine and depression. Yes, there has. It's an emerging area, primarily to Utah. There's a great psychiatry group there. And uh, as a caveat, no study has ever looked at creatine without 
antidepressant medications. So they're always as adjuncts. So we're not saying creatine could ever replace anxiety or antidepressant medications. But in these sub uh, populations, primarily uh, females with clinical depression, it's really starting to have some um, speed up recovery and decrease some of the symptoms. The mechanisms are starting to emerge. It's starting to have a role primarily from rodents, and, and this is implicated in depression where uh, they have reduced brain creatine stores. So maybe creatine supplementation can bring those levels up. Uh, there's potential to increase BDNF, so that has been implicated there as well. And there's another thing called neurofilament um, or light chain. It's an indication of neuronal damage, uh, and one gram of creatine in your diet has been shown to reduce that. So there's potential there, but the overarching thing with uh, antidepressant is it increases brain bioenergetics, as you, as you mentioned, and decreases, again, here we go, mitochondrial health, uh, decreases reactive oxidative species. All these are implicated in all the brain and, and cognitive decline and primarily depression. So I'm really excited in that area. A big RCT needs to be done, though, um, because it's always being added to either cognitive uh, behavior therapy or SSRIs, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there's also a big um, inflammatory component in depression. Crazy. There's like yeah. inflammation. In fact, there have been studies just in healthy mm -hmm. young individuals where they induce inflammation yes. through like LPS. It can cause depressive symptoms. Yeah, yeah, and 100%. Yeah. So the anti-inflammatory role comes back there as well. So you'll start to hear these two words, anti-catabolic and anti-inflammatory. Uh, people think of Advil or Tylenol from an anti-inflammatory, but creatine seems to work some very similar in the COX inhibitors as well, and um, but it seems to decrease cytokines. Um, so it could be something there to consider, yeah. Well, what's interesting is, you know, activated lymphocytes, mm -hmm. T-cells, yep. consume just enormous mm -hmm. amounts of energy, right. you know, and, and to, to basically become active mm -hmm. and fight off pathogens. Right. And so I'm wondering if creatine is taken up by, you know, these immune cells and it maybe helps in some way. I mean, you're saying it reduces cytokines. I mean, a lot of these T cells are, you know, producing cytokines mm -hmm. to fight off things, but um, who knows if they have, if they have that energetic boost, Yes. Um, how that could affect, you know, just, I would say like the broader, mm -hmm. like not having this huge kind of war going on, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, there's been some cellular data around the immune system cells, around creatine, specifically around T cells or macrophages. Uh, that's where the anti-cancer idea came in from creatine, specifically like uh, regarding lymphoma, leuke leukemia. Um, so uh, that's more in vitro. There's a lot of work needs to be done, but there's a lot of studies now looking at the anti-cancer potential of creatines, primarily from the anti uh, or the heightened immune system response.